On today's show, we are breaking down the best ads of 2023. We're unlocking the storytelling of the world's best marketers. We're gonna watch them live together. I'm gonna break them down and share lessons that any business, regardless of your marketing budget, can learn to tell better stories, win more customers, and win your customers' minds and their hearts. I'm your host, Kit Bodner, Chief Marketing Officer at HubSpot. My co-host, Kieran Flanagan, is away today, so you're getting a special solo show. This is Marketing Against the Grain, your show for marketing-minded people everywhere. Let's get into today's episode. All right, all right, Marketing Against the Grain community, we are here with a fun show today. We are talking about what what at least one person, this being me, thinks are the best five ads of 2023. I intentionally left out HubSpot's awesome Q4 campaign, but you should go check that out. But we've gone around and over the last 12 months picked out five examples of what I think are some of the best advertising that has been out there. And we're going to break them down. We're going to react to them. We're going to talk about what makes them good. And it doesn't matter if you have a huge advertising budget or you've never done advertising. The lesson of today's show is what makes a great story? How do you elicit emotion from your audience and from your community? And I'm going to break that down for you across these five ads. Let's get into the first one. The first ad, it is the only... Super Bowl commercial from this list. Very interesting. Super Bowl is like the peak of ads. And we, we, we came down with one Super Bowl spot out of the best five. And this is the Popcorners Breaking Bad Super Bowl commercial. Yo, these are the bomb. And they're air popped, not fried. Popcorners. <laughs> You're an artist. Actually, Jesse, it's oh. basic ingredients. Product front and center. This is very classic direct response ad. That's why this is here. Because you need to see what it's like to put a product front and center and sell it in an ad. What are these? <laughs> the and they're bringing back favorite characters from Breaking Bad. Don't kill me. I never watched Breaking Bad. I'm sorry. I know I'm missing out. I understand. Okay. Yeah! How much of this stuff do you have? <laughs> We've got six signature flavors, yo. Seven! You make seven! Six signature flavors. You gotta love that. It's playing on like the drug dealing Pop theme corners. of Breaking Bad, Breaking but using good. it in that Popcorners product line together. extension. <laughs> well, they, and they're breaking into something good because they're, they're connecting this value prop of this crispy snack with the notion of breaking, the notion of Breaking Bad, and why this ad works so well is a couple of things. The biggest thing is something you won't expect. And it's because the brand is in on the joke that this works so well. Like they're saying like, oh, our, our chips are so good, they're addictive like drugs, right? And like most brands in this category would be like, oh, we can't say that. That's, that's, that's going too far. Or, oh, we don't wanna uh, imply that we are unhealthy. Or we don't wanna apply that people love to just addictively eat these things, right? There, there, there's this whole pushback and conservatism against this. And that, instead, the popcorners spot goes completely the opposite direction, which is like, yeah, we're going to talk about these chips like they're drugs. And not only are we going to talk about these chips like they're drugs, we're going to talk about them with the most iconic drug dealers in television history. And we're going to spend a bunch of money to have them in the spot, to license them, to literally... Just do a full 30 and 60 second version of a Breaking Bad bit, but with popcorners in place of drugs. And so what's interesting here is that the execution isn't special, right? Like the first thing you see is, a pop, is the popcorners bag. It is classic direct response. That product is through and through, overtly in your face, that entire spot. And that's the reason for that is because the magic is not how the spot was directed or how it was even written. It was in the idea behind it. It was in the concept of that spot. And a great story starts with a great idea. You can only make an average idea so good with great execution. You, if you want to make a great story, it has to start with a really great idea. And they said, hey, we can compare our chips to being as good as drugs. And that'll be bold, that'll be provocative, and we can have a lot of fun with that. That's the concept. That's the idea. 
And that's a pretty remarkable idea, both in its simplicity and its counterintuitive nature. And then from there, they just turn it up to 11. They're like, great, we're going to get the Breaking Bad people on. We're going to do a Super Bowl spot. We're going to spend a ton and ton of money to line this up. Not everybody's going to go and do that. But this is a classic example that if you're going to do a heavy, overtly product advertisement, you need to have this unique point of view, this unique kind of angle around it to really un- to really get people to understand the value prop of that product. And Popcorners did a great job of that with their Super Bowl spot. Okay. The next ad is from another classic brand that did something really interesting. And so this is from Coca-Cola, and it's called Masterpiece. Look, I love art. So they kind of had me with the art aspect of this. Everybody's sitting in a museum, some iconic style of art, like a Picasso. But, oh, what are they doing? They're doing this amazing kind of three-dimensional play on bringing art to life. Oh, now you go from this abstract art to this completely different style of painting. And how they're telling the story is remarkable because what they're doing here is taking you across the museum with like Coca-Cola as the narrator, as the sponsor. Oh, some of my favorite artists they're featuring too, which is also doesn't hurt. And what I love is they set you up with the board protagonist right from the bat, right? And you, you know they got to come back to him at the end to redeem that because he looks so miserable to be at this museum right now. And this is so fantastical. This is classic big brand storytelling at its best. And we're back to the simple promise of a Coke making his time at the museum a little better, sparking his creativity and bring it to life because he's an art student and he was uninspired, right? You didn't quite get that from the beginning, but it was overtly clear. And then you close with a quick Coke logo. What I like about this ad and why I think it is so good, it is, first of all, Coke is kind of the narrator, the sponsor of this adventure, right? The Coke, the Coke product, the Coke brand is going along through all of these periods in art history in a way that is really interesting, right? They, so they're assigning all of this interesting art style, specific, even specific paintings to the Coke brand. So they're getting kind of the credibility. You know, I like to call it like rubbing the brand of those artists off onto the Coke brand and getting it really credible. The other thing it's doing is it's pulling you in because there's a lot of motion and fluidity to this spot. You know, how it's directed is very, very interesting. It's not just like a standard couple camera shot commercial. There's a lot of animation and What's great is that there's little Easter eggs and nuggets. And like, if you're a real art dork, there's real art dork stuff in there. So they're they're calling out to that part of the populace, which is cool. But their protagonist is in every person. You know, it looks like a bored college student who's supposed to be doing a sketch for some art class and just can't do it. Just completely uninspired by doing it. And what I love here is they don't try to do too much, right? It's just a bottle of Coke. It's just some sugar liquid right? It's nothing that's going to change your life. But they almost admit that in a way that like, hey, we're going to be part of your journey. We're going to have that creativity. We're going to spark something for you because sometimes you just want that little spark that comes from having your favorite drink, right? When you're kind of stuck and taking a beat in your head. And they showcase the emotion and the feeling of that so well, because we've all felt like that, that guy sitting there like waiting to draw with that blank page. There's nothing more frustrating than a blank page, you know, because you're just like, you're ready to pull your hair out. And I think for me, that is what I love about this ad is the simplicity of the story. They don't try to do too much. Everybody can take that away. No matter what story you're telling, do a a pass as you're editing your story, whether it be an ad, whether it be an article, whether it be a press release, doesn't matter. Do a simplification pass. And how do you make that story cleaner, simpler? And I think they did that very, very well in this ad. And that is one of the things I think everybody should take away from this Coca-Cola spot. All right. We are about to get into our third ad. It's all about a very different type of brand. This is the first kind of cause-related uh, spot that we're, we're covering today. And this is about change the ending. And this is all about Alzheimer's research. So very, very big departure from the popcorners and the uh, ads we've seen, up far, uh, seen so far. Let's get into the Alzheimer's spot. 
Oh, animated. I didn't expect it to be animated uh, this way, right? And so it was that the cruel dragon was no more. Oh, it's like a fairy tale. And the prince and okay. could be together Disney style. Forever, happily ever after. Oh, Except it starts with the end. The happily ever oh, after, we all know. I like this. For the prince had been struck by an invisible force far more powerful than the dragon. Okay. I like it. It's saying Alzheimer's Bit is worse it, than a dragon, it right? So showing you how bad this thing is. Constantly playing cruel tricks, trapping him inside a world he could no longer comprehend. Alas, though brave and resilient, the torment of paranoia and confusion completely overwhelmed. The, the change in lighting and style like really brings like the anxiety up in this, the second part of this spot. Highly emotional. You're like, I do not want to be this prince. Turning her beloved Prince Charming into a stranger she no longer recognized. Oh, uh, that hurts. And even though there was little left of the man who once rescued her, she would spend the rest of their years desperately trying to rescue him. Oh, so the flip of the story. It started out with him saving her, and then she's saving him. And it's like, you just want to like, cry. It's so emotional. And then it flips to the real life couple to really make it not abstract, to make it about you, right? And there's so much to love in this ad. It might be my favorite of this entire show. And it, it's, it's, it's my favorite because it does so many things well. It does so many things well that a lot of people often get wrong. You know, it's very easy to take this very serious topic and make it too serious, right? This is a, this is a bummer of a thing. It's like somebody dying with a very challenging mental disease and they're, they're trying to raise money so that p other people don't do this right other people don't suffer the same fate and so what's the first thing they they did they started in an animated format animation is just off the bat lighter it's a little bit more uplifting right and then they start on a very positive note that's the that's the thing you could put this kind of commercial into like the make you cry ad some ads make you laugh some makes you some make you cry some make you angry like there's different emotions this is definitely a make you cry ad and the challenge with make you cry ads is that like if they come if they're too over the top you'll just get so upset that you won't even understand the message they're trying to get across right and what you want to do in this type of ad is exactly what they did you start on a high note the prince rescuing the princess and then you slowly move your way into the, the last, the last 10 seconds are deeply emotional. And they're deeply sad. But you're not getting there from the very beginning. And you're not spending this full 30 seconds just like completely immersed in this anguish, right? So you understand what they're trying to say. You understand the story. You understand the villain in this story, which is Alzheimer's. And then the thing I love about this ad is that they bring it back to live action and real people at the very end so that you can draw that personal connection once you're like emotionally ready to do so. And what anybody can go and take away, because not everybody's going to make a make you cry tear jerker style of ad, but some people watching this video might, is that the build up to that emotion needs to be gradual, which sounds silly in 30 seconds, but you saw it executed really, really well there. And then what I also love is they didn't try to play, make it hopeful at the end. They said like, this is, they let you sit in that emotion to drive the action that they're hoping you would take, which is to donate and help fund that research. And so I really love this ad. I thought it was exce exceptionally well executed. I think my favorite that we've seen so far. Okay, the next ad is from a legendary company bringing us a legendary ad. And this ad is called The Greatest and it's from our amazing friends at Apple. Let's get into it. Okay, I, li I like that this is like very casual, right? It's not classic Apple overproduced. And this is a really hard ad to do because they're doing nitty gritty features here. It's not just like, hey, here's a new iPhone and it's awesome. It is like, 
the nitty gritty features of an iPhone that makes this really hard. They're showing you Siri, they're showing you the focus feature, but they're doing it in the lens of like your true day to day and what makes it so simple and like why you actually need these things in your day to day. They're showing you a broad cast of characters. It's not one character in the story. It's showing people of all walks of life needing these features and the value that they're getting from them immediately. Oh, so good the way they pull emotion into this. So what's amazing here is they're putting the users as the star of this spot, the star of this story. Oh, and you got to love the single piano chord close right on that Apple logo. They don't need anything more from that because you know what Apple is. It's one of the most iconic, iconic brands in the world. But what Apple did in that ad is something any company can do, right? The, the biggest lesson I want everybody to take away is that they made their customers the hero of the story they were telling, right? That is marketing 101. No matter what you're doing, if you're doing a Facebook ad, you're doing a YouTube ad, you're doing a big TV spot, doesn't matter. They made their customers the hero of their story. And they didn't say, they didn't show how good their product was. They showed how their product made the hero, their customers, made their lives better and made it better on their quest to do something great. It wasn't just in the mundane of the daily, but it wasn't about some incredible highfalutin imaginary thing. It's like, oh, here are people out there doing really remarkable things. And Apple's making that just a little bit better, a little bit easier for them, right? And that without these products, it wouldn't be possible for them to do these things. And that's what a great story does. It makes a customer the hero and it shows you there's really only one path forward. Oh, if you want to unlock your life, if you want to maximize what you can do, you need you need an iPhone, you need this software, you need these features, right? But it doesn't hit you over the head with it. It's fully integrated into the story. It's so why I love this ad is because customers are the hero, great use of music and emotion, and they, they're doing it in a really hard situation. You know, this isn't an ad to unveil the iPhone for the very first time where it's just like so mind-blowingly shock and all awesome that like you don't need anything else. No, this is like the 14th generation of an iPhone. You know, like this is this is a deep, deep cut into iterations of technology that have been happening for nearly 20 years. And because of that, they have to they have to make the same thing feel different and special. And this ad does a great job of making the same thing feel different and special. But the thing everyone should go and take away, customers of the, of the hero of the story, emotion wins in telling stories. And they appeal to that emotion both through the characters and through the music that they're using. And if your ad, if your story is too serious, if it isn't fun, people aren't gonna have that emotion. They're not gonna have that emotional connection to what you're trying to tell them. And Apple did a great job in this ad. All right, that's the greatest. And I love that ad. I think it's easily one of the best ads we've seen in a while because it's all about software for Apple, which is, which is a really different thing than just promoting the latest hardware product. We have one ad left on today's show. For our final spot today, we are going to hear from a brand that's done some great spots over the years, Dove, which is a personal care brand. Let's dive into it, see what they got for us today. This is not what I look like right now. This filter should be illegal. Here's the real me. Oh, my gosh. oh instantly on TikTok. TikTok right now. Interesting. Bold glamour. Bold glamour. Bold glamour. There's practically no way to tell that I've got a filter on. I can move about. Total Unlike news jacket. Going filters, right to the popular culture, right to the zeitgeist. Regenerated. The beautification filter can cause psychological distress. And I worry about how this impacts young girls' confidence. Oh, see, then they go right to the heart of the issue. They play the opposite side of like, oh, there might be a problem with these filters. Maybe this isn't good for our world. Maybe this isn't good for our society. Oh, and they're calling them to action. And they're saying like, you know what? These filters aren't good. So instead, let's turn it back on these filters. Let's not show them our face and have this filter retouch our face. Instead, let's be like, no. 
We love the way we look. And this is core to the Dove brand, right? What they've done is they found a news related topic to then leverage and reinforce for their brand. And they start this whole movement and this whole campaign, which is really, really powerful. And it's like they've gotten influencers, they've got regular people, they've got a whole host of folks to turn their back, right? Gabriel Union. Her back is all over TikTok right now. I'm turning my back to. I'll oh, see, and now they're having these kind of spokespeople talk about the problem of body perception, especially among youth, right? Better than turning my back on this. I think these filters are here to hurt us, and I think it's time we turned our back on them. I don't like it either. You know why? Because it doesn't look like you. There we go. Oh, there you go. They end with the target audience. They end with that child who's going to be the core Dove consumer in the future. And they end with a campaign tagline, let's change beauty. And so this is a cause news jacking at it. Anybody can do this. Like you don't have to be a big brand to do this. You can literally just do this as a YouTube video and post it, right? Like you don't have to have a big ad budget. You don't have to have all these celebrities. What's rooted here is a few things. One, Dove could only do this because they knew their brand promise. Dove is all about real beauty, body positivity, right? And they've known that well before this TikTok filter came out. They're super clear to their brand identity, their brand promise. And because they're clear on that, when this TikTok filter came out, they could say, oh, this aspect of society is against our brand promise. It violates what we believe. And because it violates what we believe, we, we have to go and take action. And we have to start a movement. We have to enlist other people to start this, to, to join this movement with us to turn our back on this thing that is counter to what we believe is the best thing for this world, the best thing for society, the best thing for the young people who are both their target audience as customers, but also the people they're trying to win over as long-term Dove customers in this campaign. And it's why they end with that mom and daughter at the end. I, th I think that's just an amazing, amazing ending uh, to all of this. And what I loved about it is that they pulled in the real time, the news footage, the news quotes. They gave a societal like validation of like, oh, this is a big, important thing. And you know where we stand on it. And so the reason this spot works is because they knew their brand promise and they used it to play the other side of a very popular issue and use it to build trust and credibility with the people who believe the same thing that they believe. And anyone can do this for any amount of money. This is not about having millions and millions of dollars. If you're clear what you believe in and then you're clear on what goes against it, you can build a compelling story against it. And you can even call people to action. And that's why they have the turn your back hashtag. It's why they have all of these components that work really, really well. Okay, that's the Dove spot. Love that spot as well. I think these are five of the best ads I have seen over the last year. I think we have broken down the what and the why behind all of these. I think we've tried to break down what any company can learn from them and take and, and put into place in their marketing. I think it's been a fantastic show today. Thanks for joining me solo. Kieran, I'll be back with you soon, my friend. We'll see everybody very soon on Marketing Against the Grain. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history, calls, support tickets, emails, and here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot, grow better.